Welcome Detroit, Michigan. Welcome Alabama. Welcome all of my brothers and sisters in orchids. To orchids for dummies. A place where you can get your life. And in today's video, darling, I just want to share care tips to get your beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid to rebloom for you after those flowers has fallen off. Please stay tuned. Welcome on back. Thank you so freaking much for staying tuned, okay, to the People's Channel. And so you had your beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid that you got at the beginning of this year, or you may have gotten it for Valentine's Day, and now the flowers have fallen off, okay? And we're talking about a healthy orchid, okay? I will leave a playlist at the end of this video for orchid care videos so you can be abreast of the situation. But this is my first Phalaenopsis orchid of the year, which is one of those Phalaenopsis orchids by SV that you will find at your grocery stores. I got this orchid from Lowe's, okay? I will leave a video link showing you when me and Fal Pal Randy purchased our orchids together. Now, first things first, after the blooms have fallen is when the American Orchid Society and myself recommends that you repot your orchid. However, when your orchid is in a really ooey and gooey situation like this, I would recommend repotting it immediately, okay? But mama is the lazy gardener trying to do better. That's why I say I'm the people's channel, honey. I'm not sitting here with these orchids all day. So the flower spike, as you can see, is no longer green. It is now turning brown. So what we can do is just go ahead and cut those off because it's already dying, okay? Or you can wait till it turns all the way brown, okay? Or yellow. This, of course, is what the color should be. You know, a really dark green stiff, okay? Flower spike. So the first things we're going to do is we're going to soak this into some water. It could be rain water or it could be warm water out of the tap. Just make sure that it is warm. If you start to smell a funny smell, that's going to be a big indication that some roots have rotted away. It's going to be an indication. Okay, so have your nose on the lookout for it. So this is all in all a healthy Phalaenopsis orchid just needs to be repotted. Those are going to be some future videos to come. But in this video, we're going to cut the flower spikes. We're going to remove all of the media from the roots. And I will show you what I like to do right before I repot my Phalaenopsis orchids. Stay Welcome on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. So this is how I'm going to do it. I have just a little plastic Soho cup, okay, with a little warm tap water in it. I'm going to take it out of this nasty plastic container. We can throw this away. We can discard it. Okay, and I'm going to sit it in this cup. Once it begins, um, once it's saturated and all of the roots have turned green, I will be right back to remove the media and show you what is the next step. <laughs> Come on back, baby. This orchid is fully saturated. Remember, this is not a repotting video. This is a care tip video letting you know step by step what you need to do and take into consideration when repotting, okay? When repotting your Phalaenopsis orchids, okay? I will leave video links at the end of this video as well as in the description box, okay? So now that the media is saturated and the roots are plump and green, now we know what roots needs to be kept and what roots needs to be done away with. Now, I don't like to do slicing and dicing, okay? That's why I said this is not a repotting video. I want to show you how to be careful because this is the most crucial part of growing your Phalaenopsis orchid, okay? This is very crucial. If you get this wrong, you can get um, root rot and you know your plant could ultimately die, okay? I don't want to scare you. I just want you to be serious and I want you to pay attention when you're doing it, okay? Pay attention to how the roots are, 
okay? So you can know how to repot it back, how it likes to be, okay? And just because, you know, you have some roots to rot does not necessarily mean that your plant is sick. Once you have orchids long enough, you will understand that that is what they do, okay? The reason that they are in this compacted sphagnum moss, okay, is because they are they have to be hydrated, okay, while being transported, as well as when they get to the garden center. Do you think once they get a shipment, they're running with their watering can saying, oh my God, let me water the new plants. Girl, they're not. They're throwing it out there and they're keeping it moving, okay? They're very lucky to get water when they are in grocery stores or garden centers. So being very careful not to disturb the roots too much or, you know, any roots that's left. Let's go ahead and take these flower stakes off, okay? Mm -hmm. Make sure to wear gloves, especially dealing with old media. You know, I normally would not use gloves because I'm a man and I'm hard-headed. But after um, doing this and it turned my nails green for six months, girl, you will not know, ma'am. Mm -mm. I learned from my mistakes. I learned from them. So this is the base of the Phalaenopsis orchid. So this is where most of the roots are attached. So once you get up in here, be extra careful. Be extra careful. Okay. So this is just the first step. There will be more videos to come. Okay. And let me know in the comment box below. If you are watching this video and you are about to repot your first Phalaenopsis orchid and you're just trying to do a little research before you do it, build up your confidence, or if you have definitely um, <laughs> repotted quite a few orchids and you know, you're an experienced grower, if you will, and that you just enjoy repotting videos, let me know so I can be able to help the kids. Because as I said, this is not a repotting video, but mama has gotten a few requests to do this so the so this is a piece of vellum which is the outer layer of the phalaenopsis root okay the string that is left on here is actually the root okay so what we want to do is without slicing and dicing all of the mushy and gushy roots we want to just pull it off you know slightly Okay, so that's not coming off slightly. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, with two hands, it came right off. Now, we're not going to pull the whole root off. We're just pulling off, you know, what um, comes off naturally. This is why I like to do water culture. Because the longer you do it in water culture, the easier this comes off, preventing you from having to do slicing and dicing and adding herbs and spices okay so if it doesn't come off even if it looks like it it wants to come off if it doesn't come off leave it alone because you know pulling and nagging at the roots especially good roots will only cause the rest of them to rot so only what is coming off naturally okay and I will also leave a video link letting you guys know just some basic common knowledge about the Phalaenopsis roots how to care for, for them, how to get those gorgeous aerial roots. Okay, that's what we want. That's what the kids are looking for. So after I remove um, majority of the media and majority of the roots that were rotting, which it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't that bad as I thought. It really wasn't. The next thing I'm going to do is get some more clean water warm clean water and i'm going to sit it in there okay for an hour or so and just to see um try to remove all of this leftover media okay we're not going to get a toothbrush and brush it okay we're not doing that we're going to sit it in some water okay normally you know i would sit it well you know what okay let me show you. Let me show you. So, stay tuned. Welcome stay on back. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Please like this video. So, this Phalaenopsis right here, what I'm going to do is actually put her into some clean water, okay? 
to let her soak off so that all of that old sphagnum moss okay the most of it will be able to come off from soaking it okay not using a toothbrush but just letting it sit in water because that's what i normally do now for the sake of time this is a phalaenopsis orchid that has been in that method okay now for a week <laughs> for a week okay and i just like to do that to give the orchid a little bit more time to um you know any roots that's mushy and gushy like this right here now we are able to okay no we're not no we're not okay oh that just came right on right on off this came off okay fab pals i also changed my gloves and put a clean paper towel down here because girl just like i got that gangrene oh shit oh Stuff like that. I don't like ooey and gooey. Mm -mm. I don't like ooey and gooey, honey. I don't like ooey and gooey. Now her leaf has been was already like this. I don't know if it was, you know, broken off or what, but it's not all the way off and it's still green. So it's definitely still connected to the plant. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse the roots off really quick because majority of them was still dry. Oh, most of them were still dry. And I'm about to spray them with some hydrogen peroxide. Stay tuned. Go get your hydrogen peroxide out. Welcome on back where we do not want to get a OTD. A orchid transmitted disease. We don't do it. Girl, my nails, girl, not only did they turn green, but girl, they was growing out green. I'm talking about pure embarrassment. I'm going to my daughter's school with green nails looking like a damn monster. Girl, no ma'am. No, no, no. Those OTDs are for real. They are serious. Now, this is some hydrogen peroxide. You can find it in the spray bottle at your local pharmacy. This is diluted. Have hydrogen peroxide. Have water, okay? And what this is going to do is sterilize the roots. Make sure that there is nothing you're unable to see, such as, you know, pests, such as um, bacteria, such as fungus and viruses, Okay, this is a more organic, safer way once you dilute it to get the roots of the Phalaenopsis orchid clean before you repot it. Okay, now if you are doing slicing and dicing, okay, now what I'm going to do now that I've sprayed the roots, okay, I'm going to let it dry off. If you have done slicing and dicing, go ahead and let it dry for a day. And then right before you pot, pot it into bark media, go ahead and let it soak for an hour like we did with this orchid over here. Letting the roots get nice and plump. I don't spray, you know, um, fungicides and pesticides on dry roots. Okay, that's something, a care tip you want to really pay attention to. Now, if you were slicing and dicing and adding herbs and spices, you want to make sure that you let it dry out. Now, if you did not do that, okay, if nothing was nothing came off such as this plant, then what you can do is go ahead and soak it in water, okay? Submerge the roots in the water, starting at this base right of the tip right here of the base of the Phalaenopsis, submerge it back into water, and you prepare your bark, okay? If you don't know, bark straight out of the pack needs to be prepared before you actually plant a Phalaenopsis orchid in it. That's a whole different video that I'm going to do afterwards, but you got to stay tuned. Like this video and have a happy growing. Until next time.